orange touch screen and Model S it's multi-touch. Um, we are here in the NVIDIA booth because we use the Tegra processor uh, for both this screen and the screen. They each have their own. Um, it's an extremely reliable processor that's also super energy efficient, so it's great for us. Um, this screen incorporates everything you would have on a regular dashboard and more into this one interface. Uh, so for example, you have a full media center here with your AM FM radio, internet streaming radio, and then it also syncs with your personal devices like your iPhone or your iPod. Um, and it syncs via Bluetooth and USB cable, so you can choose which one and your full media library will be there at your fingertips. Um, there's also navigation available, and you can switch which one of these windows is at the top just by touching very lightly right there. Um, navigation um, will have turn-by-turn -turn driving directions in, baked into it. Um, those directions will also appear here on the instrument cluster, uh, so you don't have to take your eyes off the road to know where you're going. Uh, this is fully searchable as well, and any one of these windows can be full screens um, or half screens. There's also an energy monitor here, so in real time you can see how much uh, energy is being put out by the motor, how much is being regenerated uh, by braking, and this will all fluctuate in real time. Um, there's full web accessibility here, so you can browse any website on the internet. Um, and to type, the keyboard appears down here, and we made the keys extremely large um, and also super sensitive in the sense that uh, the screen actually senses your finger and your likely target before you even touch the screen. I'm assuming um, that gets disabled while you're moving. It does not get disabled while you're moving. We're leaning toward consumer freedom and common sense here. <laughs> We have a backup camera, so when we're in reverse, you can see what's going on behind you. And then hands-free phone, which will be voice command, so it'll respond to your voice um, when you say call work or call home. Um, it'll go ahead and do that. Um, all the climate controls are here along the bottom of the screen, no matter what you have pulled up. Um, so it's really intuitive to just um, you know, adjust the temperature however you want. And it's dual, uh, dual climate. What is this build on top of? Is it Android? It's Linux. Linux, okay. And uh, all of the regular car controls that you would expect, popping the rear and front hoods, for example, um, or adjusting the lights. Um, the sunroof is also opened here by dragging and dropping uh, to whatever oh, nice. width you want it open. So this is all designed to be super intuitive and easy to learn. Um, so what we're about, hoping that it'll be very new clear. versions of the, the software? So you, that's one of the best that. things about this configuration is that all of the software is super easily updatable. We can do it over a wireless connection. We'll just call and ask if your car is parked and we'll reboot it for you and you'll have a fresh interface that's um, fully updated. Um, so that but both you're of, unable to do it yourself. In other words, there's no, like if I was a Linux guy, I wouldn't be able to write my own apps right. to do things. We're actually going to release the SDK um, and third-party developers will have the opportunity to come up with apps that we'll have here in this app library. You have like a, a, a so like a traffic store monitoring. That you could share, like people upload their apps. You know, we probably won't have a store, but we'll have a, a gallery to select from, and then you'll be able to choose which ones appear on your home screen. Very cool. Yeah. And what's the model, the the, the actual model for this this Tesla, this car uh, this that we're in right Tesla now? This is the Tesla Model S. Yeah, Tesla yeah. Model S. Okay, yeah. and this will be in all Teslas. This will be in every single Model S built. Um, every single S. Yes, well, yeah, sure and we, we probably will have the same configuration for our future models too. So we really believe that digital dashboards are the future. And this model is a higher end. Model. This model starts at fifty thousand, um, so it's a premium sedan. It's not necessarily a luxury sedan. What about this versus other models start at lower end models start at. So we actually only have this is our second model ever. Uh, our first one was a supercar, and we actually discontinued it because it was always limited production. I see. Uh, we will be launching a new model uh, at the end of next year. A crossover vehicle will come out that will also be all electric and feature the touch screen, um, and then after that, a third generation vehicle that'll be more of an economy car. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. So we're starting at the high end of the market because we need R&D money, right. Um, right. but we're driving down the costs. Okay. And if you could just re uh, reiter reiterate one more time the plant, about the plant where it's being built. Sure. Um, so in Fremont, California is where we're going to build all of our Tesla vehicles. It has the capacity to come out with 500,000 vehicles a year. Um, we're starting with 20,000 vehicles a year, but we fully intend to expand into that capacity with all of our new models, and um, it's going to be all American-made, end-to-end. Roll of aluminum comes into the factory, Model S drives out the other door. 
great. Thank you very much. Thank you.